This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Unless you've been living under a rock, you probably heard that there's something going on with GameStop stock right now. As a video game retailer, GameStop has not been doing particularly well recently. Consequently, its stock price has been decreasing. But since about January 12th, the stock price has been climbing with a huge spike in the past few days. Then yesterday, several trading platforms terminated investors' ability to buy GameStop stock. The question is whether it's a conspiracy to manipulate the market or an attempt to protect brokers and investors. One of the trading platforms which halted GameStop stock buying is Robinhood.com. Robinhood bills itself as investing for everyone and democratizing finance for all. Robinhood's termination of trading in GameStop stock has now resulted in a class action lawsuit. The big question is whether Robinhood's termination is legal or illegal and whether the class action lawsuit will succeed. Big disclaimer, I'm no savvy investor. I was wiped out in the 2008 market crash, which came at the same time I effectively lost my job while I was finishing law school and starting my law practice. I lost most of my 401k, my fiance at the time, my job, and I had to live off of student loan cost of living disbursements. If all those things hadn't happened at once, I probably would have been in a much better position. But instead, like Joe Exotic, I may never financially recover from it. It appears I'm not the only one that suffered a lost decade. Many late Gen Xers and Millennials suffered greatly. I don't know what we're calling our youngest generation. Is it Gen Z or Zoomers? But they also have inherited this mess. Briefly, what's going on with GameStop? The current situation is caused by a combination of factors making a once-in-a-lifetime perfect storm. If you don't understand it, you can't be blamed. It's complicated. Most laypersons understand stocks as buy low and sell high. You buy a stock, hold it for a period of time, wait for it to go up, sell when you either need to or sell when you think the stock may not grow any further. But there are many other tools that investors use to make money. Today's situation is partly caused by short sales of stock. Shorting a stock is a bit complicated, so I will oversimplify. Investors can make money by buying a stock low and selling a stock high, but they can also make money by predicting a high stock will decrease in value. The way they do this is through the short sale. An investor will borrow stock from another investor. The investor will sell the borrowed stock at the current price. If the stock decreases in price, the investor buys back the stock at a lower price, returns the borrowed stock, and keeps the money made off the difference. Let's use a simple example. Let's pretend we borrow $100 worth of stock. We sell the borrowed stock immediately for $100. Let's pretend the price goes down to $10. We buy back the stock for $10, give the stock back to the lender, we've made $90. Of course, in practice, there are some fees and other calculations involved, but to understand the GameStop situation, that's basically how it works. If the borrowed stock goes up in price instead, the investor would lose money. If we sell the borrowed stock for $100, then it goes up to $200, we still have to return the borrowed stock. So we buy it back for $200 and give the stock back to the lender. Now we've lost $100. Back to GameStop, some information about investors' positions are public information. Currently, GameStop is the most shorted stock on the market. Approximately 138% of available GameStop stock has been short sold. This can happen when investors borrow a stock to sell short and then lend that stock to another short seller. This means that a very large amount of stock eventually needs to be bought back and returned to the lenders. When a bunch of people need to buy back stock, it can cause the price to skyrocket. To make matters worse, Redditors and other traders saw this coming and bought a bunch of GameStop stock in anticipation of the short sellers needing to buy back their stock. Short sellers buying back stock is called covering their position. 
as we speak, short sellers of GameStop stock are predicted to cover at almost exactly the same time. The situation is known as a short squeeze. This is as simple of an explanation as I could possibly make out of the situation. GameStop's short squeeze has caused the stock to skyrocket from approximately $20 per share to almost $500 per share over the past few days. As short sellers have moved to start covering their positions amid the skyrocketing price, billions of dollars have exchanged hands. Some short sellers have already lost some of those billions, with CNBC reporting losses of at least $5 billion as of the morning of Wednesday, January 27th. Additional losses of billions of dollars are expected in the coming days. In the middle of this short squeeze, the Robinhood trading app and a handful of other trading platforms terminated investors' ability to buy GameStop stock. The trading platforms say that this is to protect themselves and their investors. Robinhood wrote that, as a brokerage firm, we have many financial requirements, including SEC net capital obligations and clearinghouse deposits. Some of these requirements fluctuate based on volatility in the markets and can be substantial in the current environment. Basically, Robinhood is saying that they have their own level of risk involved with allowing investors to buy such a volatile stock as GameStop is currently. I don't quite understand what would prevent Robinhood from allowing at least cash purchases of GameStop stock, but I'm not savvy enough to know if there are additional obligations. But the timing of the termination coupled with a lack of advance notice already looks very suspicious, almost like Robinhood is protecting the short sellers who stand to lose billions of dollars. Suspicions grow even stronger with reports saying that some of the short sellers have a conflict of interest with the Robinhood trading platform. It's reported that Robinhood trades go in part through Citadel Securities, who may have an interest in protecting the short sellers. This link is unclear, but Citadel was previously fined $22 million in 2017 for fulfilling stock trades at prices other than the best price. Citadel disavows any influence on Robinhood's decision to terminate trading of GameStop stock. But that hasn't stopped one investor from filing a class action lawsuit. Brendan Nelson from Massachusetts has filed a class action lawsuit against Robinhood alleging breach of contract, breach of an implied covenant of good faith and fair dealing, negligence, and breach of fiduciary duty. Like lawyers, some financial advisors are required to keep their clients' best interests at heart. This is known as a fiduciary duty to the client. Let's go over the lawsuit. The lawsuit was filed in the U.S. District Court in the Southern District of New York on the 28th, yesterday, Thursday, and it starts by building a foundation of who Robinhood is and that they are a trading platform targeted to the people, primarily younger investors and over 10 million users. The lawsuit alleges that GameStop stock began to rise around January 11th and Robinhood allowed its retail investors to trade GameStop on the open market. Then the suit alleges that on January 27th, Robinhood, in order to slow the growth of GameStop stock and deprive their customers of the ability to use their service, abruptly, purposefully, willfully, and knowingly pulled GameStop stock from their app meaning retail investors could no longer buy or even search for the stock on Robinhood's app. It alleges that Robinhood's actions were done purposefully and knowingly to manipulate the market for the benefit of people and financial institutions who were not Robinhood's customers. Since pulling the stock from their app, GameStop prices have gone up, depriving investors of potential gains. Additionally, in the event GameStop goes down, Robinhood has deprived investors of shorting GameStop in the hopes of price drops. In sum, Robinhood has completely blocked retail investors from purchasing GameStop for no legitimate reason, thereby depriving retail investors from the benefits of their services. It alleges the Financial Industry Reporting Authority, which governs brokers like Robinhood, has a rule, 5310, regarding the best execution and interpositioning, requiring Robinhood to make every effort to execute a marketable customer order that it receives promptly and fully. 
by failing to respond at all to customers placing timely trades and outright blocking customers from trading a security, Robinhood has breached these, among other obligations, and caused its customers substantial losses due solely to its own negligence and failure to maintain adequate infrastructure. Now, that's a lot there, because did they really fail to maintain adequate infrastructure? Did they really owe a duty? And did they really not fulfill trades that were already ordered by customers? Or did they simply block their customers' ability to make new trades or buys on their platform? We'll go over the contract that you have with Robinhood in just a few minutes. Robinhood continues to randomly pull other securities for no legitimate reason. So of course, a legitimate reason would be a defense there. Robinhood is pulling securities like GameStop from its platform in order to slow growth and help benefit individuals and institutions who are not Robinhood customers, but are large institutional investors or potential investors. Then it goes into plaintiff's individual experience that he tried to purchase stock and found GameStop was unavailable. It did not appear, even though it is a publicly traded company. Therefore, plaintiff, like others, lost out on all earning opportunities. It then goes on to make class action allegations. The class is all Robinhood customers within the United States who were not able to execute trades on GME after Robinhood knowingly, willfully, or purposely removed it completely from their platform. Now, I already see a problem with that because this is a federal lawsuit and federal lawsuits will need to have some kind of jurisdiction, some kind of federal jurisdiction. So traders within New York will probably not be allowed to be part of this class action lawsuit because they don't have diversity jurisdiction or uh, losses over $75,000. It would have to be both in order to have federal jurisdiction over negligence claims, breach of contract claims. Those are all claims within the purview of state law, not federal law. So that might be a problem. The claims that they make are numerous, whether Robinhood knowingly failed to provide financial services, whether they failed to provide a duty of care, whether they purposefully removed the GameStop stock to harm their customers' positions, whether they violated FINRA Rule 5310 from above, whether they violated consumer protection laws, whether it breached legal, regulatory, or licensing requirements, whether it breached its contracts, whether it was negligent or grossly negligent. Now you can't contract around gross negligence in many states, so it's possible that grossly negligent conduct might overcome any defense that there were terms of service. We'll go over that in a moment. Whether they breached their fiduciary duties, whether they were unjustly enriched, whether class members were injured by Robin Hood's conduct, and whether there is any entitlement to injunctive or declaratory relief. So they allege breach of contract, that there was a customer agreement with Robin Hood, that Robin Hood breached its customer agreement by failing to disclose that its platform was going to randomly pull a profitable stock from its platform, that Robin Hood failed to provide adequate explanation, that Robin Hood knowingly put their customers at a disadvantage compared to customers using other trading platforms, that Robin Hood failed to provide access to its own financial incentives, that Robin Hood prohibited plaintiffs from performing in a timely manner under the contract, that Robin Hood failed to comply with regulatory or licensing or legal requirements, and they failed to exercise trades requested by customers. Then they allege breach of the implied covenant of good faith and fair dealing. This is a legal requirement that is in every contract, regardless of whether it's expressed. They say that Robin Hood unfairly interfered with the rights of plaintiffs and members of the class to receive the benefits of the customer agreement by failing to provide services necessary to carry out a trade, by failing to provide certain trading services at all, by failing to inform individuals in a timely manner of the drastic changes in trading abilities, by prohibiting plaintiffs from buying GameStop stock for Robin Hood's own monetary interest and not disclosing those interests or conflicts of interest that their conduct has caused damage to plaintiffs and the class. Then the plaintiff alleges negligence, that Robin Hood has a duty to exercise reasonable care, that they breached their duty by removing GameStop without notice from the app, by failing to provide financial services related to the stock, 
by failing to notify customers in a timely manner of the blackout. That Robin Hood's conduct was want of even scant care, and its acts and omissions were and continue to be an extreme departure from ordinary standards of conduct. Their actions breach any duty of care to their customers, but are also inconsistent with the standard of care expected from similar firms in the open market. That no institutions similar to Robinhood have ever outright banned customers from purchasing a specific share of a specific security. That they abandoned their customers by pulling GameStop stock, a standard of care so far below what is required for a business engaging in time-sensitive trading services, amounts to a complete abandonment of its duties that its grossly negligent and wrongful breaches of its duties owed to plaintiffs and members of the class proximately caused losses and damages. Those losses reflected damages to plaintiffs in an amount to be determined at trial. And finally, a breach of fiduciary duty that as a licensed provider of financial services, Robin Hood at all times relevant owed its customers the highest good faith and integrity in performing its financial services and acted as a fiduciary to each customer who agreed to the customer agreement that it breached those duties by, among other things, failing to disclose that its platform was going to remove GameStop purchases in a timely manner. They actually removed the purchases. They removed GameStop for their own benefit. They failed to provide access to financial services in a timely manner, that they failed to comply with legal regulatory and licensing requirements, and they failed to exercise trades and actions requested by customers in a timely manner, and that they've damaged plaintiffs. So the plaintiffs are requesting an immediate injunction requiring the reinstatement of GameStop stock to be purchased, an award of damages, attorney's fees, punitive damages for willful, wanton, and reckless misconduct, and any other relief the court deems just and fit. So this will be a very interesting lawsuit if it can survive a motion to dismiss. Robin Hood very likely will try to have this lawsuit dismissed by claiming that it has the right to terminate trading services under its terms of service. In its terms, Robin Hood says it may terminate these terms and conditions or suspend your access to the service or the content with or without cause at any time and effective immediately. Whether that contract clause overcomes the class action lawsuit claims has yet to be seen, but parties can typically contract around many legal obligations, meaning the plaintiff, Brendan Nelson, will need to present reasons and arguments why Robinhood's terms and conditions don't supersede investors' right to trade on the platform. If the lawsuit survives a motion to dismiss, the court will need to evaluate the class action nature of the lawsuit. Class actions have some special requirements under Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 23. Assuming that the lawsuit is certified as a class action and is not dismissed, the plaintiffs will have the right to the discovery of relevant information, information that makes the plaintiff's claims or the defendant's defenses more likely to be true or less likely to be true. This means Robin Hood would need to turn over all relevant communications about its decision to terminate GameStop trading on the platform. If there were communications from a group like Citadel or influence from insiders or outsiders, those communications would very likely need to be disclosed and would become part of the plaintiff's case. It's not hard to become suspicious under the circumstances. If enough trading platforms terminate investors' ability to buy GameStop stock, shareholders may become spooked and start to sell off their holdings, causing the price to crash, giving short sellers exactly the opportunity they need to buy back the borrowed stock at a low price, covering their position, minimizing their losses, potentially making a profit, and averting disaster. It's not hard to imagine a calculation where the loss of a class action lawsuit is cheaper than the loss of billions of dollars of short sellers' money. The situation has prompted an outcry from investors interested in buying GameStop stock in the middle of the short squeeze. The outcry has been so great that Congress has announced that it will pursue investigations in the wake of predatory conduct from hedge funds. The U.S. House Committee on Financial Services has announced a hearing on short selling and online trading platforms saying, Hedge funds have a long history of predatory conduct, and that conduct is entirely indefensible. Private funds preying on the pension funds of hardworking Americans must be stopped. Private funds engaging in predatory short selling to the detriment of other investors must be stopped. Private funds engaging in vulture strategies that hurt workers must be stopped. 
Addressing that predatory and manipulative conduct is the responsibility of lawmakers and securities regulators who are charged with protecting investors and ensuring that our capital markets are fair, orderly, and efficient. As a first step in reigning in these abusive practices, I, Maxine Waters, will convene a hearing to examine the recent activity around GameStop stock and other impacted stocks with a focus on short selling, online trading platforms, gamification, and their system system gamification and their systemic impact on our capital markets and retail investors. We must deal with the hedge funds whose unethical conduct directly led to the recent market volatility, and we must examine the market in general and how it has been manipulated by hedge funds and their financial partners to benefit themselves while others pay the price. At the time of this recording, early in the morning before markets open on Friday, January 29th, GameStop stock is down below $200 from a high of $470 on Thursday the 28th at 10 a.m. It's not hard to think that trading platforms terminating GameStop stock purchases didn't coincide exactly with the drop in value, which hit $132 only one and a half hours later at 11.30 a.m. on Thursday the 28th. Whether this is illegal market manipulation remains to be seen. I don't doubt that Congress will investigate. I don't doubt that the SEC will investigate. But I do remember clearly how ready the US government was to help large investment firms in 2008. And I remember clearly how unwilling the US government was to help small investors at the same time. In the immortal words of Joe Exotic, I will never financially recover from this. I hope that the GameStop short squeeze of 2021 works out differently. Thank you for watching. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education program here on YouTube, also on Floatplane, and on twitch.tv slash lawfulmasses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern. Our channel is community supported by your monthly financial contributions on patreon.com slash ljfrench, sponsors.com slash law, through YouTube membership, and through Floatplane subscriptions. Thank you to the following $50 plus supporters in the month of January. Joe Tyson, Mitchell Roten, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Spirit Bear, Andy, Benjamin Heitoff, Goliath Cleric, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Rudolph Becherer Jr., Oscar the Prophet, Hot Grills in Your Area, Torpedon, Brandon Abel, Cassandra Curran, Sovereign Titizen, Shadow Tycho, RDH Dragon, Earthbound Star, Nathan McCarty, and Awful Asses with Lemon Fresh. And thank you as well to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on your screen. I hope everyone has a great week. I will see you in the videos that drop. I love you all. Bye.